Hey, Chidorin. Alrighty, here we are. Apologies for the delay. But uh, I'm here, I'm here. Let's go. Right, so... Uh, where were we? <laughs> Midnight Ghost Hunt. Okay. Mm hmm All right. What an incredible location. Does someone say this? Yeah. Okay. We're in the dark, silent textiles room. Hey there. Her coquettish voice cuts through the stillness, making me think of those unlucky nocturnal birds doomed to sing away in the dead of night. A chidori is a kind of plo plover? What is a plover? What are these words? Oh, you mean... A like... No, wait. If I search for it, it's gonna give me the Romanian version of the word, which is something else. <laughs> oh, God. Plover. A bird with a short tail and long legs that is found mainly by the sea or in areas covered with grass. So Chidori is a kind of bird. Okay, there we go. Now we know. Oh, it's a little bird. All right, all right. Where was it seen? She asked. Uh, asks excitedly. Oh, she's so enthusiastic about it. <laughs> Accompanying us is none other than Chidori Takasaki. Yeah. Yaigaki kun whispers to me in a low voice what's happening? Why is the text doing that? <laughs> I guess her proposal of a ghost hunt back in Isnik wasn't merely for her own amusement. <laughs> she's so Yeah, she's so happy about it. Oh my god, the mannequins could move! Yay! <laughs> oh, oh, that's cute. Everybody needs a chidori of their own. Apparently, Takasaki kun has already started making a habit of <laughs> sneaking into the textiles room in the middle of the night to hunt for the shapeshifter of the dorms. Yakaki kun uh, hadn't been overly enthused herself, but after hearing what I had to say, had decided if she was in for a penny, she was in for a pound. She definitely watches scary ghost apparition videos on YouTube. <laughs> I, I do, we all do, we have our very own Chidarin, of course. Also, hi, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just saying that if you don't have a Chidorin, then you should need to get one. <laughs> or rather, she'd make the case that a pound's payment split between two meant only having to shell out 50 pence each. Yatsiro-senpai, shapeshifter-ga-mokugeki-sare-teiru-basho-wa-doko-na-no-desu-ka? The words are barely out of my mouth before Takasaki can makes a beeline for the chair. She plops down in it without a moment's hesitation. <laughs> I love it. Takasaki-kun looks around, a fervent gleam in her eyes. However, although she gives everything a thorough once-over, it doesn't seem like the phenomenon is appearing to her either. <laughs> she states this with the utmost confidence and I stare at her disbelievingly. Yegaki-kun for her part looks antsy for some reason. She nods her understanding. I chime in a moment later. 
鏡を見て驚いたわけじゃないというわけだねそうです被服室なのに鏡がないなんてなんだか本物のような気がしますよね<笑> That's something that had bothered me too Plus どこか潜める場所はないか探したがどうも人一人隠れる場所はなさそうだねここは2階ですし登ってくるってのも考えづらい Both myself and Iagaki kun had been thinking along the lines of someone making mischief. Takasaki kun, who has been gloating over her findings, considers our words in silence for a moment, then. I personally don't think so because、um, it would have to be too complex, too elaborated of a thing. She stares haughtily down at Iagaki kun, her voice raised. そこがお前のダメなところなんだ。何でも信用する。私は疑ってかかる。私の長所。普通は短所よ。今のご時世だと長所だよ。あったが、そうそう。ま、今回は千鳥に部があるな。ここで本当に見たというなら、いたずらの線は薄い。でしょ <laughs> She's so happy about it. <laughs> She puffs her chest out proudly. <laughs> And I catch h i e g a k i k u n throwing her ample bosom a resentful glare. Our conversation fizzles out, and quiet reigns over the room for a moment. When I break it, my words echo creepily around the room. We're here in the dark, in the place where it is said to appear. And the likelihood of it appearing again is only increasing. Despite having the others with me, I can feel my stomach tying itself in nervous knots. Unable to bear the silence, I'm racking my brains for some topic of conversation when. So, Yeba, Shirahane ni niteru te you, ano sanka kukanke no ten new se no hanashiwa, do not te runda. Yegaki kun abruptly changes the subject. Looks like she was in the same boat as me. ね Still, given Ichigo Kun's personality, it would be even weirder if she actually kept things to herself. For some reason, her soft murmur stands out sharply to my ears. The shadowy figure of the shapeshifter that's still lurking in the back of my mind transforms into Mayuri Kosaka. Why are all of these mysteries taken into this? Like, at certain moments, it feels like they want to insinuate that Mairi could be like a ghost hunting the academy. She's not dead, she just left, right? Right? Like, why, why is her presence still, like, so. It feels like it. Not dominates, but like it takes over certain things in the mind of these characters. Why? <laughs> a girl caught up in a tragic love triangle who threw away her life. Excuse me? <laughs> What are we seeing? <laughs> What? <laughs> Although it's not like she's actually dead, I still can't help but think of Mayuri Kosaka, the girl who disappeared. Masaka. A horrible thought comes to me and I shake my head, forcing it. Clear of her image. Now, that was creepy. You think, why? <laughs> I'm so busy, my head is spinning. But the daily grind still extracts its toll. Our day to day life rolls on regardless of the press pressure I'm under. I work hard at my studies. I fight hard in my sports. Oh, wait, I need to. I also need to be careful when to skip, right? I was just reading stuff, but then I realized I need to skip, don't I? There we go. My bad! 
<laughs> My bad. There we go. Okay. Uh, so, got into an accident. This lying to implicate someone was attacked. Uh, okay, the girl in the... Um, in the... Um, sewing room, right? I think here we need to do the right answers, right? We need to properly give the answers to the... The mis mystery? Yes. Yes, I see it now. I found it. Yes, is lying to implicate someone. Okay. <sighs> Ripped it out out of spite at the love rival. Here we go. She goes around the table pouring tea for everyone. I'd like to say that now, I know it's her, but... Or now that I've gotten used to it, it's fine, but... <laughs> Why did we have to read that? <laughs> They really needed to show us Rika again, right? Right? <sighs> Every time we see it, it's Halloween is a little bit closer, right? Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, perspective change, right? Um, I gotta go away. There we are. Autumn was in full swing, and I was watching a movie in the AV room. It was an old movie in monochrome. Black and white movies always make me feel a certain way. Somehow the era in which those movie stars lived appears even more alive than in color pictures. It feels to me less like a story viewed on a projector and more like I'm peeking through a square paned window into their lives. And as an extension of that, I feel intimately connected to, those, to these people. As I watch A Gentleman's Agreement, I think of Yatsushiro Senpai and my confession to her in that twilight greenhouse. What was it I'd felt then? Were my feelings for her born out of affection rather than courtesy? Uh, the girl my older sister had declared she was in love with. Good intentions alone aren't enough. Standing by and doing nothing is the same as agreeing with their idiotic rules. This concept from A Gentleman's Agreement resonates with me. Is it best to just sit back and watch? Is it better to keep these feelings to myself until they wither and die? Like I did back then? Like I did back then? Has this happened before? It kinda gives me that impression. It's kinda sad. Time marches dispassionately on without me arriving at a conclusion. Hey, Pat! Thank you for the BTs. Thank you, thank you. I don't know how the sound was low, late on that, but uh, there it is. Okay. That's what Yatsushiro Senpai had said when Suo chan was showing her how to make shortcake and cooking club. Yeah, that. Mm, mm hmm. But clever as I am, I'd known it was a lie. Nerine Komikado's uh, Senpai's birthday was coming. Oh, she knew. She knew. I knew that Komikado Senpai was special to Yatsushiro Senpai, and I was certain it was more than just a friend. Oh, oh, bless her heart. When I saw her making such an effort for Komikado Senpai's sake, and at the same time saw her licking ice cream from my sister's proffered finger, I felt something inside me being twisted. Twisted like the handle of a rusty faucet. Things had been complicated. I felt the rising tide of my emotions gradually approach and pass a major watershed. Oh my gosh. It was the same when she was teaching me to sew my Halloween outfit. Then, on my way to ballet class, I happened across Yatsushiro Senpai and my sister talking in the hallway. I'd been about to announce my presence when... Seeing her pat my sister's head... I felt a dark emotion creep over the dams I'd built up within. Gradually but surely, it began overflowing. Which is why I... 
I encouraged my sister to talk to the girl she was crushing on, while I did my best to avoid her. Truly the saddest of pet pets. Yeah, oh, my heart. But the moment I saw Yatsushiro Senpai, the dam burst again. That androgynous beauty in her Vlad the Impaler outfit. Was there any girl in the entire school who could resist her? Surely any single healthy young woman would find themselves stuttering and blushing before her. My sister had. I had. Give me a hug. When she'd jokingly spread her arms out, I... I understood that I was doing something unforgivable. I was deceiving my sister, betraying her. But even so, I had to test Yatsushiro Senpai. I'm wearing the same clothes as my sister and we've been even covered up the facial moles that differentiate us. Our own parents would have trouble telling us apart. I tell myself that if she can't see through my game, I'll willingly withdraw. But she did, didn't she? She did! Oh. The creak of the heavy door is followed by the clack of my footsteps. In the silence of the chapel they sound strangely intrusive and distorted, which is just how I feel right now. Without hesitation, I make a beeline straight for her. I come to a stop, Christ gazing down upon us. She stares at me. Those steel blue eyes of hers loosen the tight faucet inside me. The dam is barely holding. Then... Yeah... Uh, I can skip this, right? Yeah, okay, there we go. Man, these are long. <laughs> they really went for it in this uh, in this one. Okay. Next. Oh, and I can also show myself now. Yep. Here I am. Here I am. All right, uh, and now we keep giving the opposite responses, yeah? With Nettie, it would turn into a food tour. <laughs> Sokun asks me. So, I answer. She nods and murmurs her agreement, then immediately after her hand... Um, immediately after, her hand flies to her mouth like she'd said something she shouldn't have. <laughs>私失礼なこと。何?食は大切だ。軽んじていたら、八重垣君に蹴り飛ばされるよ。<laughs> Hearing her giggle, I feel a small portion of the burden lifted from my heavy heart. Okay, we can skip now. Uh, you're not about mad about yesterday, then what's got you so down? Uh, last time we said about the hairstyle, and now we're joking about desserts. Okay. Okay. それはその何料理部で積もうとしていた目当てのデザートが僕の前で売り切れたからさあれは返す返すも残念だった嘘ね <笑> Yeah, I was I was actually wondering is she gonna take it or is she gonna protest against it? Yeah, she protested. She declares flatly and I find myself giving in to pressure. Mm. So, this is the wrong answer because we tried to mask things and we are not being forthcoming. I have no choice but to be honest with her. 
いつものすまし顔もいいけれど女の子をしているゆずりはもかわいいのに残念だわ We can skip this Hmm, let's see, Autumn to me is reading, sampling all kinds of food <laughs> Go for the food now I have a painful memory of being dragged around by my best friend on a food tour on one autumn before we arrived at the academy. Oh, she cringes at the figure I'd casually dropped. A cake a pie and a parfait, like she was ordering a beer. What? How, how do those look like each other? I don't know. <laughs> Apparently, you can tell the caliber of a place from those three things. Aha, uh -huh, interesting. Interesting screening methods. Ichigo-kun seems confused. Seeing the two of them rendered speechless, a cynical smile rises unbidden to my face. Oh, wait, I can skip now. Alright. So, you're not really a fan of perfume, are you? Uh, not really... Not really. <laughs> I'm a little taken aback by my friend's words. Nelly Okay. <laughs> it's the kind of adult topic we never usually touch on, but Nelly just smiles serenely. Yeah, she's so innocent. She smiles brightly. Although that's what I feel in my heart. It's truly adorable how innocent she is. <laughs> so it's hard to feel too down. <laughs> oh, cuteness. <sighs> Women are messengers of hell. Who can destroy the seeds of Buddhahood. They may look like... Like that word, which I don't know how to read, and I don't know what it is. But at heart, they are like yaksha demons. I don't understand this. <laughs> I just have the feeling that overall I don't like it. Okay, I don't know what the context is. A line from one of the historical novels I've been into, okay. It's apparently a phrase from the Avamasaka Sutra. Okay. Avatamska. I can't read this. What is this? <laughs> Avatamsaka Sutra. Okay. Ma, tashkani satori o hirakeru jokyo dewa nai yo na. Okay. I muttered to myself ruefully as I stared down at the burned pumpkin omelet. Neri's cold is on the mend, so she'll be able to join our fall leaf viewing at the weekend. As wonderful as that is. Wanting to make a sweet omelet, I'd made sure to add plenty of sugar, but I still seem to have messed up. It's burnt to a crisp. Plenty of sugar doesn't sound like the thing, though. I've made tamagoyaki. The quantity, quantity of sugar you put in is quite conservative. That uh, plenty of sugar does not sound right. <laughs> I still haven't responded to her confession. There's no end to my worries. I'm never gonna reach enlightenment. Once 
I reach for the bowl of vegetables to chop up some more of the pumpkin I'm adding to enhance the omelette, only to find that there's none left. Used everything. <laughs> the student opposite me, who's also practicing making her bento, eagerly clears her throat. I ask, what's up? <laughs> wow, there's so many nice girls at this academy. That's very cute, very nice of, uh, of that girl. It's just... Yuzuri has not really there, it seems, like, and she's already wasted one pumpkin. Maybe she just needs to take a break rather than go for a second pumpkin that will go to waste. <laughs> just saying. Thank Oh, she's gonna do it herself, okay. I thank the kind underclassman again, then take off my apron and shake my head to clear it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one at a time. I gaze out at the crisp autumn sky. Before me lies an abundant autumn harvest. Like that poem, Green Leaves in Eyes, they might not be as lush as summer, but autumn vegetables are still verdant to the point that they seem to lavish their ripening life upon their surroundings. Hmm? I remember one time when my little brother got obsessed with them. The store bought frozen ones though. Uh, hash brown, you mean? Hash browns shouldn't be that difficult to make. Peel, chop, and mash the potatoes, then stir in something to make the mixture stick and fry them up in oil. Do you mash? Them? Really? I know. I don't know. I've never made it, but I've eaten it. I guess maybe for the filling, but on the outside, I feel like it's like pieces that are kind of like kind of grated. So maybe that's like uh, the filling is mashed, but the outside is like I don't know. <sighs> I reckon that should be all there is to. Oh, no. I sneeze. Have I caught Nettie's cold? And hear a cute startled sound behind me. <laughs> I spin around. Ringo Sasaki-kun is standing there awkwardly. Precious. I nod. She must have spotted me muttering to myself in front of the allotment crops <laughs> and worked out what I was up to. It's not a particularly big task, so it's not like I really need her help. All the same. Seeing her despondent expression, I find myself saying this. Really? I had no idea. I like your cumbers. But I like your cumbers. I want to tell her that it really does. I'm talking to her to try and dispel the awkwardness, but getting only a non committal response in return doesn't help. <laughs> Still, I push on. This desktop wallpaper with blue skies and green fields? Mm, I wonder what you're talking about. I ramble on, wowing her with my extensive knowledge of default PC wallpapers. <laughs> ah, Windows XP. Mm. <laughs> Chidori maybe is too young to know. Do you know, Chidori? Ringokun continues digging up the potatoes as I'd asked in silence. I... 
I hadn't exactly yelled, but it's enough for Dingokun to sense my surprise. Stop what she's doing and come over to me. You do, alright, cool. Startled, the frog hops down onto the dirt and from its perch atop a pumpkin. From there, it gazes up at us uh, curiously. I lean in close to regard the frog as it looks around alertly. <laughs> Seems like Yatsushiro Senpai in her head is way more out there than the real deal. <laughs> Sorry, so the Yatsushiro Senpai in her head, so what she's imagining. <laughs> I think I like, genuinely imagine that the user would just like, Oh, a frog, I'm gonna kiss it. <laughs> Speaks more about uh, Ringo than about <laughs> his. <laughs> ah, precious. Bless her. Oh, cute of her to play along. That's nice. This is this. This this. I can't help but smile at the genuine relief in her tone. Ichigo kun wa. カエルの置物を集めるのが趣味なんだろう持っていってあげたらどうだいうーん、いちごねならいろいろ<笑> いい姉は弟を尻に敷くものさ。リゴくん laughs along with me. 週末のもみじ狩り楽しみだね。はい、いちごねも張り切っていました。栗や金な、キノコを取れるといいなって。もみじはあまり関係ないんだね。私としてもまだまだ食い気なのです。that reminds me of the phrase, founder of food than boys, which douses a little cold water on my mood. Hey? Why are you thinking of that? What? I pretend not to be affected. Indeed, indeed. She nods with a smile and I smile back. A breeze brushes my cheeks and when I look up at the sky, I feel my spirits lift a little. Didn't they make sandwiches in the end or am I, am I confusing it with something else? I have a, a very clear memory of sandwiches. Who made the sandwich? Ah, oh, no, wait, maybe it wasn't them. They just told the person who made the sandwiches that the. Uh, that Yuzu likes. Uh, what was it? The thing that she disliked? Tuna? Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Something is jumbled in my head. What? <laughs> I thank her, but at the same time... I ask myself as I gaze up at the sky. As her footsteps fade into the distance, a thought that crossed my mind several times before returns to me. It's a cliché, but... If I were someone else, if I'd been born male, I doubt I'd have had a single qualm about falling in love with Neri, or about telling her. And I probably wouldn't be agonizing this much over it if I hadn't received Ringokun's confession. <sighs> in 
In the sky, I see the face of my cowardly lion, always there to save me whenever I'm in trouble. She calls out to me clearly, but I'm too chicken to look her in the face. Hi, Yuzu. <laughs> to be honest, it's not fun at all being back in this spot and kind of like reliving things through her very dark and negative perspective. <laughs> It makes me sad all over again. <sighs> okay, we can skip now. I gaze up at the autumn twilight. The rays of golden light breaking through the puffy clouds create a strikingly beautiful effect. And I feel a supreme sense of loneliness. Okay, why did I have to read that again? Now I can skip it. I don't really. Alright, here we are. Okay. I don't regret my confession. If I hadn't conveyed my feelings to Yuzuri Hayat Shiro Senpai that day in the chapel, they probably wouldn't have lasted. And yet my heart aches. I thought I'd feel better after telling her, but instead of feeling lighter, my insides had churned, and I'd felt a pain in my chest. She'd asked me to wait a bit longer for her answer. I felt a sense of relief upon hearing that, but at the same time I have a desperate urge to know her answer as soon as possible. The sensation that I am not myself, putting on an act so that no one suspects anything. I'd heard from my sister that Yatsushiro Senpai seemed down in the dumps. She'd asked me for advice and I hadn't had an answer for her. I couldn't possibly reveal to my sister that I was the cause of Yatsushiro Senpai's angst. How could I tell her that I coveted the same woman? She'd said with a bright smile. When I saw the smile on her face, my insides knotted even tighter. I felt like my chest was being squeezed. And then I saw her at the aforementioned cooking club. Just like my sister had suggested, Yatsushiro Senpai exuded an air of emptiness though she tried to hide it. It seemed like she was struggling with a great sense of loneliness. A loneliness known only to those who have tasted a particular sort of pain. We understand it as no doubt does Suo-chan. I can tell from the compassion displayed in her words and manner. Perhaps fearful of my gaze as I stared intently at her, she whipped her face away like a hand snapped back from a flame. I'd expected it. I understand that she feels awkward. But even so, her behavior squeezed at my heart with a merciless strength. It was so overwhelming that I didn't even notice my sister's suggestion that we go leaf viewing. As she looked at me to back her up, I was finally able to regain control of my emotions. When the week drew to a close, we set out for our fall leaf viewing on the Sabbath. I'd been feeling depressed, but as I walked through the forest beneath the clear autumn sky, I gradually started to feel better. The scent of the autumn breeze to my nose, the colorful leaves before my eyes, the sound of easygoing laughter in my ears. As I chatted with my sister and friends, it came home to me that we were well and truly into autumn. Then perhaps thanks to my improved mood, I was able to cheerfully broach a conversation with Yatsushiro Senpai. However... However... Things are never that simple. After arriving at our destination, my sister proposed a chestnut collecting competition. We would draw lots to form pairs. By a stroke of good fortune, I was paired with Yatsushiro Senpai. That was the simple part, but... As evening drew in, um, she'd called to me that we should be heading back. Responding to her summons, I'd rushed forward, forgetting I was on a steep slope and... The worst had happened. She'd bragged, patting her sprained ankle. My heart had been shattered into pieces and I knew I had to do something. Telling Yatsuro Senpai that I'd go get help, I ran off uh, back to the others. I'm not very fit, but I ran, like my life depended on it. My heart was pounding like a drum, and I could hear the hot blood pulsing behind my ears. Just when my throat was starting to feel painfully raw from my ragged breathing, I ran into Komikado Senpai, a little short of the place where everyone was gathered. When I told her what had happened, she informed me 
without hesitation that she would go and search herself. Then, instructing me to let the others know what was going on, she set off running. Having stopped once, I began to feel exhaustion settle heavily on my shoulders, but I managed to drag my leaden feet onward to rejoin the group. Then, my sister, my friends, and everyone else rushed off the way I'd come. Things are never that simple. The fleeting happiness I'd felt dissipated as cruel reality reared its head. In the darkness, I heard the sound of feet crunching on dry leaves. Why isn't it me over there? Nerine appeared carrying Yuzuriha on her back. When I saw them so close to one another, it wasn't jealousy, I felt. It was sadness and resignation that filled my heart when I glimpsed the expression on Yuzuriha's face. Her look was one of longing and of profound relief, like a child cozying up to their mother. I shut my eyes, trying to erase the image of the two of them and their happiness. But the image remained, like the trails of light drawn through the darkness by fireflies, which seared themselves to your eyelids even after they've faded to nothing. Oh, my heart. Alright, uh, we're back here and I can do this again. Hello. Okay, what is this choice? Are you just starting to come down with... Ah, okay, you're asking about the, the cold. Mm -hmm. I've just sprung a fever from being around two hotties. <laughs> we get to use this option now, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're both looking at me with concern. <laughs> Oh god, okay, let's see. What's the reaction to this? Oh god. I respond with my usual banter. <laughs> oh, Kitsu. Seems like they've taken it as a joke, although I did genuinely mean it. Asked again whether I'm really alright, I respond that I do seem to be coming down with a cold. Okay, we can skip here. So, uh, Sokin must not have heard about it as she asked what this contest is. Wait, what was this about again? The Coral Contest. Okay, that's what it is about. Okay, okay. And last time uh, we made jokes about the wanting to hear Sokun sing, and now we just answer honestly. All right. I preface my explanation by telling her that it's another of the school's annual events. When I ask her if she's never heard about it before, she shakes her head. リコさんは placid woman, what? <laughs> In my mind's eye, I see Sister Basket's happy-go-lucky smile. Sokun considers this information carefully for a moment before raising her head like something's just occurred to her. My perceptive underclassman asks me. She's drawn out the subtext of what I was saying, and I hold up my hands and joke that she's got me. <laughs> Right. We can skip here. Uh, you gonna join me? Thanks for your concern. What was it? Ah, oh, this was when Erika was coming out of the nurse's office, right? Ah, okay. I see. If you don't have a fever, taking a bath might be a good idea. And now we joke. You're gonna join me? Okay. I see. I see. I see. 
I've heard of folk remedies that say getting in a bath and raising your body temperature can boost your immune system and help fight off a cold. So I know she's not being sarcastic, but still. I can't find the urge to see her squirm again. Uh, predictable. <laughs> I did not know that, actually. As she explains her logic to me, I can't exactly chime in and tell her I already know. Okay. We can skip now. Okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. A certain staff member will be bringing you dinner. Okay, so the question is who would be doing that? And we said door mother. Uh, and now we say Sister Basket. Okay. Without thinking, I mutter Sister Basket's name. Nerine questions me. Yeah. Yasashigedakaranamayoageta.Like me, I add with a chuckle. Oh no. Kashizukarinara Soto no de Kitakotogaranodakedo. She adds to save Sister Basket's honor. Moska sister Katabamidochoga Otese no Eo Tapuri no Umino. All right, you should pay attention to the imagery, I suppose. Ah, when singing, is that what it was about? Sorry. Probably it was about singing, right? I can't really get it from those lines. Um, with regard to my phrasing, I should imagine myself as the original singer. Okay, so with regard to my phrasing this time. So that's why Playing classical music to your vegetables will help them grow? I don't think I've ever heard of such a thing. Is, is this such a thing? Like, people believe that? Oh, so that's what she means. What Takasaki Kun is talking about is a fundamental of singing, yet it's often disregarded, especially by people like me, who overestimate how good they are. <laughs> <laughs> I thank Takasaki-kun for her suggestion. I'm about to go back to the topic of imagery, but yaigage kun beats me to the punch, putting a period on our previous conversation with the by the by. Oh wait, I can actually skip now. My bad. Right. I want to know how far and in what way these rumors of the wandering Wendigo of the woods have spread. Alright, so we asked Ringo last time, now we ask Ichigo, I guess? Yes. When I address my question to Ichigo-kun, her crestfallen expression immediately transforms to elation. Of course, Ichigo knows all the gossip. She nods. I rack my brain, wondering whether the origin of the rumors being the first years means I can use my senior status to put a stop to their spread. I fiddle with my ponytail. No, oh, no, I can skip now. Okay. 
A certain friend, who I seem to be hanging out with a lot lately, tells me she's already heard. That was all. We can skip now. Okay. <laughs> In order to eradicate the ghoul... I enlisted the help of Yagaki kun and Ko. On the next Sabbath, we left the dorm straight after lunch to head out to the woods where the Wendigo waited. However, どうしたもこうしたもないって八代先輩はおっしゃっているのよ顔を見たらわかるでしょお相手の顔色がわかるようになったなんて進歩じゃないか what are those noises? What are they doing? It sounds like snapping branches. Ah, pruning. They're pruning. Okay. A feeling of impotence churns in the pit of my stomach at the voice. Though it is of course devoid of any ill will. Anyway, to cut a long story short, we were captured by Sister Basket. Right after lunch, just as we were setting off. Oh no. Spotting Sister Basket in front of the dormitory building, a huge pair of shears in her hand, hands filled us all with a sense of dread. Uh. Takasaki Kyun blatantly made sure to avoid eye contact, and I too dithered over whether or not to call out to her. However, Erika beat you to the punch. So that's why they were helping her. As Yaigaki can put a hand to her meager chest. Why do you have to describe her chest as being meager? Just put a hand to her chest. That's it. Just her chest. That's it. That's it. No qualifiers in front of it. Ah, Takasaki can open her mouth. I can guess now what she was about to say to her. Don't. <laughs> Unfortunately for us. I was too slow perceiving the look of affection Yaigaki Kun was casting towards Sister Basket. I mean, of course, they have a very good relationship. バスキア教諭には世話になっているんです。こういう時が恩を返す時ですよ。ナーチドリ、ヤツシロ先輩。うん。ね。まあ、本当にいいの。皆さん、どこかへお出かけだったのではないのですかええ、そう。野暮用は
<laughs> eradicate. I love it. <laughs> we ended up first having to eradicate excess branches. <laughs> Not seeing Yagaki-kun's uncharacteristically apologetic expression, I decide to make conversation. <laughs> I ask without pausing in my work. さつきやつばきなどの常緑根葉樹は春が適しているけど今飼ってもらっている花水木や山帽子などの落葉紅葉樹は秋が適しているのよそれはどうしてです理由は単純落葉樹はこの時期なら葉がなくて枝ぶり
こすりつけた匂いで縄張りに来た他のクマは大きさまでわかるそうだぜ二人ともどこでそういうことを覚えるの Takazuki can ask us with the disbelieving laugh. I keep my eyes on the trees as I respond. I explained that that's when he'd taught me the ways of the forest. So, Yagaki kun trails off and doesn't respond to Takasaki kun's prodding. Guess it's not a subject she wants to elaborate on. To Nakanaka omosiroi mono mitsketana. Wendigo no kiba de marimashtaka? Yeah? Tabe no kosa. これって野菜ウェンディゴってお野菜が主食なのかしらそんなわけないだろうがお前とは違うんだよ順当に考えればこの森に住む動物たちが食い散らかしたんだろうよ I doubt it it's not you <laughs> Ah what a line jeez <laughs> Ah She never misses an opportunity to poke fun at、uh, Chidori for eating salads all the time. Bits of half eaten carrot and potato are strown around the roots of a tree. The roots of the tree are strewn around the roots of a tree. The tree is 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 a tree. Even as I continue chatting, I'm starting to get the feeling that something's not quite right. The nibbled vegetables comprise of carrots and potatoes, yet I've never heard of either growing wild around here. Which means something must have dug them up from the academy's allotments and dragged them out here, but. Ah, yet we haven't received any such reports. As I'm running things over in my mind, Yaegaki can suddenly enter my field of vision. She catches my attention. I don't know why. When something catches your attention, there's always a reason for it. That was another of my dad's teachings. If something nags at me, even if it's just the slightest niggle, I've got to investigate the cause. Yaegaki kun? She's staring wide eyed at a fixed spot like a deer caught in the headlights. That's why my eyes had been drawn to her. Now, my guess follows hers like it's been drawn by a magnet. The Kasaki kun must have seen it too. There, between the trees, where the light of the setting sun filters down through the leaves, a white shadow. <laughs> Her shriek breaks the spell. <laughs> the next instant, the Wendigo disappears, and I give chase. I knew I should have just took a left at Albuquerque. I glare along the path as it stretches on into the distance. I'm really feeling the directionally challenged rabbit's frustrations right now. <laughs> I was sure I'd seen it as I broke out onto the well maintained path, but it must have already been way ahead of me. I'm still glaring around the place when my two underclassmen finally catch up to me. Senpai, Wendigo? Well, it seems the Dawn Mother is pretty aesthetic. <laughs> She puts a hand to her heaving chest. She must have followed as quickly as she could while maneuvering her Amitya partner's wheelchair. I showed him the dirty sack, which was wholly responsible for wrapping around my feet and distracting me so that the Wendigo escaped. 
おいおいこの学院の七不思議はさらうって聞いているが<笑><笑>袋に生徒を詰めようとしていたってわけ That's an image. I feel as though the forest itself shudders at the ominous suggestion. But the darkening forest continues to shake as though laughing at my train of thought. Ay, ay, ay. Alright. Uh, mystery questions yet again. So we do the right answers. So the bits of vegetables. The stain on the sack. Recycling. She knows the truth. There we go. Oh, perspective again. All right. Clouds have been hanging low over my gloomy mind with no sign of lifting. Shortly after I started elementary school, I was hospitalized with pneumonia. Okay. With pneumonia. In my sickly state, my eyes wouldn't show me reality as it truly was. Everything was hazy, as though I was seeing the world through roughened glass. My surroundings were indistinct, indistinct, ambiguous. I was aware only of the sharp needle of the IV piercing the back of my hand. Things feel similar now. Clouded vision and a distinct pain. Just like when I watched Nerine Komikado carry Yatsushiro Senpai on her back. Sharp pain and a haze over everything. I felt terrible that she'd badly sprained her ankle because of me. But it hurt even worse to witness her happiness. When I close my eyes, I again see her giving herself up to my embrace like a child to her mother. Sparks of jealousy set the fire raging in my chest. I have become hopelessly twisted inside. I'm incapable of being happy for the person I love. As autumn approached its end, I heard from my sister that Yatsushiro Senpai was laid up in bed with a cold. Wait, can I read this again? It hurt even worse to witness her happiness. Okay, okay, okay. I felt like I maybe got something wrong. No, it's alright. Ah. <sighs> I resolved that this time I'd actually pay her a visit, but just like when she sprained her ankle, she was turning away all well-wishers. According to my sister, it was because if she let even one person see her, she'd be inundated with a flood of visitors. It made sense. I must have looked disappointed because she told me of the rumors that were circulating. Rumors. The Wandering Wendigo of the Woods, one of the rumored seven mysteries of the Academy. I'd heard the name before, but it was only rec recently that actual sightings had started to be reported. Knowing my love of all things spooky, she dragged me out to look for it. Ah, okay, I see. That's the part that would cheer her up. And knowing that she was doing it for my sake, I wandered the woods with her, even though my world was still just shades of grey. The trees' colorful leaves were falling, their branches starting to look lonely and bare. I couldn't help but think back on when we'd gone leaf viewing. Making cheeriness, I'd tramped through the piles of crunchy leaves until... My world suddenly opened up. Yet Shiro-senpai smiled at me and I saw it clearly. She made me laugh with her usual jokes and the pain that had been tormenting me faded away. There was a distinct undercurrent to Yatsushiro Senpai's banter, an implication that she could see through my facade. It's something I was able to spot because I had been acting the same way toward my sister. While what she held within her was different to mine, honed to precision, my happiness in finding out we had something in common had outweighed the guilt. The guilt, <laughs> not the guild. <laughs> oh my god, the guilt. <laughs> as far uh, sorry, as talk of the Wendigo spread, another rumor sprung up that the coral contest would be temporarily postponed. However, a statement was issued by the faculty stating that the Wendigo was simply a misidentified wild animal. I would still be able to see Yatsushiro Senpai sing. 
Knowing this, I was anticipating the day of the choral contest, but I looked forward to it with an equal degree of trepidation. I'd heard that she would be singing in the final song of the performance as a duet together with Nerine Komikado. Their duet resonated within me, but their voices brought back the pain in my heart, which fractured like light through coarse glass. I felt it would expose the same aspects that were present when I suffered from pneumonia as a child. Still, I wanted resolution, and because of that conviction I was able to face up to myself, my vision clear and unclouded, however much my chest still ached. The choral contest was over. After checking that my sister was asleep, I slipped out to Yatsushiro Senpai's room, wanting to finally hear her answer. However, I happened to catch her leaving. I was about to call out to her, but I stopped when I saw something familiar in her expression. Feeling as though I somehow knew where this was going, I quietly followed behind her as she made her way down the corridor. Oh no! Oh no, she saw! She saw everything. That's how she was there. Okay. She just, like... She foresaw it, and then she saw it. Okay. Uh, sure enough, she passed through the heavy doors to the chapel, and after her came Nerine Komikado. Looking up at the sky above, I imagined what was happening within the chapel. But I had no need for speculation. I knew from the look on her face. It was the same look that I'd worn when I slipped out of the Halloween party and confessed to her. Picking a star in the sky, I focused all my anguish on it, until I realized that it was blinking. Although the stars operate on a different time scale, their, their brilliance changes, like how a candle flame will flicker and dim in a breeze and burn brighter in the moment before it's extinguished. How long did I gaze up at the star to distract myself? The sound of footsteps rushing away brought me back to earth and I looked toward the chapel. Also, she didn't. She didn't witness the whole thing. She had enough imagination to figure out what it was. And, yeah. All right. That bright blonde hair stood out even against the profound dark. Nerine Komikado had fled. Before I knew it, my feet were carrying me inside the building. I, I'd guessed what had happened from the aura Komikado Senpai had carried with her through the darkness, but... Yatsushiro Senpai looked terribly fragile, crumpled before the image of Christ on the cross. When I'd witnessed her being carried by Komikado Senpai, I'd been assailed by emotions that had no outlet. And I knew that they'd never find one, no matter how much I yearned. And yet, seeing her in that fragile state, some wicked part of me whispered that perhaps this was my chance. Perhaps the flower of illicit love that had bloomed between them would prove to be my way in. The compassionate urge to console her fought the wicked desire to take advantage of her in her weakened state. Those emotions quickly darkened my heart like a sudden summer rain on asphalt. I didn't do anything, the translation just didn't show, but I guess it's the same line as before. So there was anything new. I would assume. Let me scroll through this for a sec. Okay, we have even, even more actually, or no? Oh, okay, uh, this is something that we've read. I can skip it. Okay. Um. <laughs> Man, that was a lot of text. Here. Yeah, I won't ever reject you. Yuzuri Hayatsushiro, I accept you. Yeah, so this was what she said last time. Same line. Okay. 
that is confirmed um actually i think it's a good moment just give me a second i'll make a quick run to the toilet uh and then we'll continue with this all right just bear with me for a moment Already here I am. I think we skipped this, right? Oh no, not this, sorry. Next. Next is what I need to click, yes. Right, so we're no longer in there. We're back to this choice and I can do this. There we go. Okay. To see to think our secret could have been found out so soon. Feign ignorance confirm her suspicions. What is this about? Ah, Erika asked her directly if she's dating Ringo. Okay, got it. Uh, this time we feign ignorance. Okay. <laughs> her lips curve into a feline smirk as she chuckles, and I give her a death glare, taking care not to let anything show on my face. So, don't be afraid. But, I didn't think I was going to be so bad at all. I thought I was going to be so bad. まあ、Still smirking, she takes another drink of her coffee. She doesn't seem to find it so bitter this time. で、君は何が言いたいんだい私が佐々木妹のことを知っていて驚いているんでしょうが Ah, okay, we can skip now. All right. Rain in winter is too quiet. It was literally just that line that I needed to read. Okay. Okay, move on. Uh, what, what is this? So what did surprise you? The fact that she's so unhappy about it too. I really didn't think she'd... Ah, talking about how they're acting towards uh, Ringokan, right? And um, uh, last time we answered that Ichigokan's keeping her distance too. And now we're gonna answer the one with Sister Basket. <laughs> Which really doesn't really fit, but sure. Uh, I think of our pious Christian teacher. <laughs> Basuki 
It requires courage for me to say it out loud. If Sister Basket, and by extension the faculty, has found out about our relationship... Because Ichigo Ken had seen the le letter meant for Ringo. Yep, there we are. Ichigo Ken. Eh, Shojiki, Scoshkurai, and Nakataga is Surukamoto, and Motte Mastaga. Are Hodorokotsuni Sakerioni Narutoa, or Motte Masendestane. This information hits me hard, and I feel a pressure. We can skip. Sorry, <laughs> I just get like into into the thing, and uh, sometimes it doesn't register in time that I actually can skip that. Okay, I want to hear what exactly it is you like about this Sasaki here. I feel at ease around her was the previous answer, and now I like that she likes me, which is the absolutely worst answer you can give to that kind of question. Like. Ugh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> that... no. She suddenly turns the romance talk around on me. <laughs> I give an answer in the same light-hearted spirit as the question. Okay, she means it as a joke, maybe, but still, it's kinda... Uh... Nah. Am I the only one who's bothered by the, this kind of answer? I don't know, like, I, I recoil from it quite a bit. <laughs> Seeing her lips from a tight form, a tight line, I internally berate myself. Yeah. It's not something about them that you like. You just like being put in the situation where you are liked by someone. Not only does it sound narcissistic, but also it's yeah, right? I, I, um, it, there's nothing in it that actually speaks about the other person. It's all about you. It's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> okay, so it's not just me. That's not bothered. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, obviously, we all perceive things differently. Oh, モテ自慢ですか。違う。僕も女だ。愛するより愛されたいってだけさ。お互い思っているのは大前提としての話だよ。As <sighs> I explained myself, the flush returns to Ringo's cheeks, and she smiles bashfully. Yare have you ever been in love before, Yuzuriha Senpai? I don't want to talk about it, and now we deflect with, I guess, with my father. Oh gosh. <laughs> I banished the image from my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, little girls tend to have that. Uh, I guess like it has to be at a really young age where you don't yet know what love actually means. Where likely you are like the thought of being with one of those like pesky boys from school or like from kindergarten or whatever. Like. Why would I want to be with that guy? It's terrible. I don't like boys, but my dad, my dad is awesome. <laughs> if I ever have to be with the, uh, a man, I would just want to be with my dad, right? So that's kind of like the, the the thought process behind that. And a lot of girls have that. I had it too when I was little. <laughs> I was very, very little. The memory of it is very faded. So I only remember bits and pieces, but I do remember that like, if I have to marry someone in the future, I just want to marry my dad. <laughs> you know, it's like a super innocent thing from a child that just has no concept of what 
uh, marriage and love and um, you know being in a couple actually means it's just this thought of like if I have to spend my life next to a male person I want my dad because my dad is awesome right so that's that's just it it's so cute so cute uh -huh. That's a lie. I respected my father, but for as long as I've been aware of it, my romantic feelings have only ever been directed towards women. Alright. I mean, this situation wouldn't be a romantic feeling in the, to begin with. But yeah. That's fair. While I know that I'm the one who's different, it still makes me feel forlorn. Okay, we can skip now. I never thought things would be simple. But I also hadn't expected it to be quite this rough going. I've been making every effort to resolve the werewolf of the bell tower incident, but... Despite doing my very best to speak with my fellow students in order to get information about the case, People are refusing to respond properly. Everything with me and Ringo set a precedent and I have not made any attempts to bridge the resulting gap with my peers. Our interactions on miscellaneous academy matters have been confided to... Sorry, not confided. <laughs> have been confined to the bare minimum. And that's meant I haven't been fully aware of just how much people are keeping their distance from me. No. Mm, but there's not much point in comparing them to now. The problem at hand is that I'm unable to have the conversations I need in order to gather information. Wondering what to do, I press my index finger against my cool forehead. I don't fancy myself a detective, which means I need someone else to act as my eyes and ears. Maybe. The image of the girl who has always been there to support me comes to mind unbidden, but I am in no position to ask for her help, nor do I have the courage. In which case, I can't hold a candle to that girl, although her Amitya partner Hanabishikun is also trusted by her classmates. She'd make an excellent assistant. Telling myself that it's for Ringo, I need... I head to the library after class. If I'm being honest, it wasn't entirely unexpected. Right as I arrive in front of the library, the doors fly open and there she is. Before I even have time to consider turning tail and fleeing. I've been snared. <laughs> By Ichigo Sasaki. My face, the picture of seriousness, I nod. Rather than this girl who actively approached me, I chose her sister. According to Yegaki-kun, while they're not acting obviously out of sorts, there's a cold wind blowing between the twins. And it's all my fault. I nod again. She's acting the same as ever with me. It seems she doesn't intend to change her attitude toward me because of things with her sister. I keep my usual masks in place. The president of the Council of Nicaea and the jokester Yuzuri Hayatsushiro. Oh man, the fact that she's stating it to her own self, like spelling it out. Mm. <laughs> my heart. Oh, that hurts. So, I spin on my heel. She's hit the nail right on the head. Don't 
なっていることができない人だってこと分かっていますそれで事件のことを調べようとしていることも You really lives in a society はいはいはいお話を聞こうとしても避けられているのですよねだから代わりに事件を調べてくれる人を求めている Surprised by her intelligent assessment, I let her know that she's got it pretty much right. Boku da kede wa tezumari de ne. Kawari o saga shte iru. Sore. Watashi ja dame desu ka? Eh? So chan mitai ni nante teki nai kedo. O hanashi o tazuneru nara, shiri ai ga oishi, yaku ni tatsu to omoimasu. Honestly, her offer has come completely out of left field for me. I mean, she. My true feelings come pouring out in the form of that one question. A cruel question to ask her. For a moment, she, her expression shifts to one of pure sorrow. However. Interesting. <laughs> she declares spiritedly, and I find myself moved by her kindness. I just thought that there must have been discord between the sisters. The bond between twins is stronger than I'd realized, though, and not so easily broken. But if the whole. Um, what was the name of the bell tower thing? The whole incident. Um, was made up by them. Why is Ichigo so desperate to be involved? I'm confused. Does she just want to know what Yuzu knows? Maybe keep a tab on it? I don't know. I decide to take her up on her offer. As I watch her feed the rabbits, I murmur that we've gathered some pretty useful information. <laughs> さすが <laughs> I like this. This is like a, a different take on too many cooks spoil the broth or something like that. <laughs> too many detectives spoil the case. Hmm. I was shocked at just how easily ichigo was able to coax the teachers into talking. And it also served to hammer home my own failure. <laughs> It would be weird for the teachers to stick their noses into their students' love lives. I really should have thought to speak with them myself. Around minute.信用度で一段驚くからね。別に信じてないわけじゃない。それにしても、ひどい捻挫のようだね。急に襲われて慌てて逃げたって、雨で抜かるんでいたからそれで。なるほど。滑ってしまって余計にひどく崩いてしまった
でも心優しい彼女は襲ってきたものを生徒だということで犯人探しをされることをよしとしなかった。Ichiko can frown and nod. s She went along with Ringo's decision, but it seems it doesn't sit right with her. Which is why she's helping me. しかし、狼男だと言ったからには、小老のルーガロンのことを知っていたのだろうよく失われていた七不思議の名を知っていたね。リンゴはもともと階段好きで、そっち方面のことを調べてましたから。コミカド先輩ともよく七不思議について話していたみたいですし。The sudden mention of Nettie's name makes me flinch, but right now I'm wearing my jokester mask, so I quickly recover. それでかばうためにルーガルを持ち出してきたのか。僕も会の年間で調べてみたが、驚くほど出現数の少ない会だという。You underestimate the power of the sisters to gather the information about all the mysteries. そうなのですかああ。なんというか、あまり実がない七不思議の一つだな。小老の、聖堂に現れ遭遇したものをさらうとだけ記述されていた。それだけですか夜遅くに行ったとか、悪いことをしたらとかはそういった表記は全くない唯一深夜なるはずのない鐘の音が聞こえた時に現れる Frowning, Ichiko can fold her arms and tilt her head thoughtfully 聖堂聖堂なんというか聖堂にお化け I'm sorry <laughs> I、uh, clicked and、uh, it、uh, skipped the voice the rest of the voice but that's okay She has a point. A creepy monster is out of place in any a sacred place. I suddenly have a flash of inspiration for a lame pun. Ma, Jinja, da Kenny. Obake got it, and was so good night. Face palm over face palm. What is this? What is this humor? <laughs> What? <laughs> It took me a second, but then I was like, okay, I see, I see. What the fuck? I... <laughs> Come again. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> She's clearly overcompensating.、Um, I wonder what the, the, the Japanese version of that was. <laughs> I feel like the English one is probably just shoehorned in to make sense a bit in English. She's clearly overcompensating. I'm so embarrassed. I want the ground to swallow me up. <laughs> I'd only wanted to lighten the mood. Demo, say, don't you back at the Nanda Kayofkini, say, don't you know, the cottage or two is the time it's good at our Hanashimi Tides, ne? I had the same thought. My cheeks are still burning, but happy to move on. I tell her I was about to say the same. Hokano Nanafsigi to Chigai, Shoro no Rugaru, the Ke, Tashkana Koshi no Yona Monogani. A story made up to frighten children, like that if they get too close to a certain river, they'll be pulled in by the mythical kappa. In reality, there's no kappa, but there are dangerous rapids. It conveys a warning to kids in a way that's easy for them to understand. Agreeing with Ichigo's proposal, I decide to head back to the scene of the crime. The extent to which it's going, I'm. Something is not making sense here to me. 
Despite being gilded by the warm colors of the setting sun, the chapel gives off a frosty impression. Although maybe that's just me projecting as I stare up at it. She casts her eyes down. Her gaze is trained on the stones beneath her feet. あの日、この聖堂へ she blinks at me, not seeming to comprehend what I'm implying. The room I spy behind the windows of her eyes is disordered and chaotic. Finally understanding her face pales. It's an even more hideous thought than any image the word werewolf can conjure. I guess she paled because they probably didn't consider this. <laughs> they didn't realize that this would be such a major hint. Clasping her hands in mine, I make a vow. And as I look into her eyes, I see fear and turmoil. The pieces are coming together, gazing at the chapel, now red as blood in the dying light of the day. I let out a long, faint sigh. Sleep immediately pulls me down into its depths as though it was just waiting for Suokun to leave. I barely slept in the days following the meeting in Iznik. Sleep now takes me like I've slipped from a cliff and I'm falling endlessly into the deep ravine below. Ah, oh, wait. I already read this. I can skip now. I, okay, for some reason we needed to read that. Alright. Um, what's the basis for thinking she was in the dorms? She wrote in her diary. I'll make the same choices now. Uh, what proves Nirine Komikado wasn't at the chapel? Lack of footprints. Okay. What made me realize the footprints were a red herring? Both Ringo's right and left shoes were muddy. Who made up the werewolf of the bell tower? Ichigo Sasaki. Alright. From our silent room, I gaze up at the night sky. The cool, clear light of the crescent moon gilds the forest with silver. As I gaze out at the silvery blue sea of trees, I think of two women. Uh, yeah, sure, no worries, no worries. It's actually the next one in line, so... Oh, you mean instead of doing... Uh, okay, 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 to first do that, then the others. Okay, understood. Mm -hmm. We can do that. Uh, okay. One toward whom love had been revealed to me through jealousy. What is this sentence? One toward whom love had been revealed to me through jealousy. What is this sentence? But okay, let's skip. <laughs> Yuzuri Hayatsushiro, who I'm not involved with. And... It's not just me, right? I'm probably very tired and I've had a rough day. <laughs> so I'm not computing at 100% here. But <laughs> that was a weird turn of phrase. <laughs> I look over at where she lays, sleeping peacefully. We had lied to one another from the very first time, for the very first time, and our relationship had become strained. As the days of silent treatment had stretched on, out of frustration I had gone to her with a proposal. A proposal to switch places. I had suggested we take turns going on my dates with Yatsushiro-senpai. 
A stupid idea born out of desperation and the turmoil of having had a relationship complicated as it never had been before. I'd expected her to get angry at me and tell me to quit screwing around, but instead... In fact, with an impish smile like back during the Bloody Mary days, she had taken me up on it eagerly, saying it sounded like an interesting experiment. So, as not to be found out, I had taken the dates in Erika Yaegaki's room, while my sister had gone to our trysts at the Saint Joseph beneath the chapel. At first, I'd felt no hint of jealousy toward my sister as she confided in me about her dates. I simply felt happy for her as I listened. I didn't want to see my sweet and innocent sister sad and resentful after all. However, how many dates in was it? I had noticed a tiny red mark on her neck. Oh no. As my sister sat on the bed proudly telling me about their night. Ouch. It was then that I felt the niggling touch of jealousy in the pit of my stomach for the first time. At first I thought it was leveled at Yatsushiro Senpai, though it may have been misplaced. I thought I was blaming my girlfriend for not realizing she wasn't with me. I thought I was jealous of the fact that she was being intimate with someone other than me, but the dates continued and I continued to listen to my sister as she blithely chatted about what happened during their trysts, and I started to wonder I asked myself as I watched my sister snuggled up under her blanket and sleeping peacefully. Jealousy writhed within me as I listened to her talk about their date, cup in hand, but that feeling had been di directed toward them both. Toward my girlfriend, Yuzuri Hayatsushiro, for getting close to someone other than me. Toward my sister, Ichigo Sasaki, for getting close to someone other than me. I felt the same jealousy toward them both. Is this feeling a product of my own possessiveness, or...? My heart sinks at the thought of that red mark on her neck. Not just because it means she's been getting close to someone other than me, to Yatsushiro Senpai. This feeling twisting my heart is... Oh, I see. I see the choice. I see the choice. I need to save here, right? So it's from Ringo's perspective that we're making a choice, which is interesting because we haven't, haven't had that. Who am I feeling this for? Ichigo or Yuzuriha? So... And... This needs to be Yuzuriha, right? And then, in order to get the Ringo one, I'm reading to see to not mess it up. I pick Yuzuriha and then at the next one, I choose Ringo, right? Yuzuriha here, okay. Okay, just, just double checking because I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> so, Ringo is feeling this towards Yuzuriha. Okay. Okay, let's skip this. It's okay. We've been through it. Alright. Yatsushiro Senpai, do you remember your promise? Ah, the time when we joked about taking a bath together. Uh, this time we say I don't know what you're talking about. I guess this was the way of ensuring at least one bath joke per root. Mm -hmm. I see, I see, I see what they did there. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Ugh, this is such a bad answer too. Her earnest gaze seems to pierce right through the most hidden depths of my heart. <laughs> the pressure of her gaze only increases, the intense look in her eyes bringing back memories of the incident one year earlier. 
リッカ君助けてくれないかスオ君が僕を睨むんだよ<笑>どうしたの<笑><笑>すまないねスオ君約束はもう少し待ってもらえないか As she looks up at me, I feel terribly small. So it's a much less sorry. She is dumb. Okay, sorry. Now we can skip. Um, have you had a falling out with Komikado Senpai? Maybe it's because I came on to her so strong. Okay, I remember now. Maybe it's to do with the Ringo this time. Okay. Why would she suddenly be avoiding me? Ringo to no koto. Rikka-kun's brow furrows at my whispered words. She clearly feels awkward. Ringo and I getting together was what set off the whole werewolf of the bell tower incident. People saw me as a womanizer. They thought I was betraying my longtime partner, Neri, for a new flame. Still... Talk about the delayed reaction. <laughs> Maybe I'm not one to talk, but why now? Okay, we can skip now. The wintry chill of the night air brings clarity to both my mind and heart. It's the perfect environment to ponder. Okay, that was the only new line. Skip. <laughs> All right. Listen to your heart and go where you want to be. That's what they're telling me. So, we have to pick between Ringo Sasaki and Nerine. And we make a save here. Yes, alright. And we do Ringo first, as request. Okay. Closing my eyes, I take a moment to listen to both voices before opening them again. All I see before me is Ringo. Nothing else. I'd always thought she was an odd girl. She's not the kind of girl everyone would agree is beautiful, like Nerine Komikado or Suo Shirahane. But as I gaze intently at her, I feel as though a pebble has been tossed into the deep pool of my heart. It sinks down to the very deepest reaches of the pool, where no one, not even me, might get to it, no matter how hard they try. No one except her. That's where Ringo Sasaki's beauty, her virtue, lies. She, Rinko Sasaki, is the only one who's always had eyes for me alone. Facing her fully, I tell her I've made up my mind. Each of their approaches to romance are unique. Ringo must have felt that. She looks down. I pat Ichigo-kun's head as she tries desperately to put in a good word for her sister. Then I tell her I get it. Removing my hand from Ichigo-kun's hair, I take Ringo's small warm hand in mine. She blinks at me like she can't quite get her head around what's happening. <laughs> she can't believe it. Bless her. 
Her answer comes not in words, but in actions. She presses her lithe, warm body against mine. I can hear her quiet sobs as she weeps. No. My own tears rain down on the back of my hand. I'd started crying without even realizing it. One season is coming to an end, but I can feel the new one now beginning. Before I knock on the door, I'm distracted by the window and turn to look out at the sunset-stained sky. While the season is undeniably winter, sunsets always remind me of summer. In my memories, they always come as a pair. From between the bare branches of the trees, I spy a vermilion cloud in the shape of a cat. The clouds are all perfectly still, like they've been pinned to the sky. The way they hang stubbornly in place reminds me of the girl I'm about to meet with. <laughs> Forcing my cynical smile to my face, I knock on the door to her room. As they invite me in, I apologize to both Iaigaki-kun and Takasaki-kun for interrupting their leisurely Sabbath day. <laughs> I can't help but smile at her usual banter. Takasaki-kun ignores her and goes to get me a coffee. ホームポットに入れておきましたけど、少し冷めているかもしれません。ちょうどいい。僕は猫ちゃんなんだ。やかきくん <laughs> protests that she's got that patent on lockdown. <laughs> what? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> the coffee is a little cold, but I don't care. You ask me, it's just bitter bean juice anyway. <laughs> 僕に飲み物を勧めてくれる好意が嬉しい。あの、どうしたんですか？秋だからね。メランコリックな気分になっているのさ。もう冬ですよ。I <laughs> chuckle agreeably. Yes, I'm feeling a little subpar, like my inner clock is ever so slightly out of sync. それで何のようなんですか？不肖の後輩の顔を眺めに来たわけでもないでしょ。Countenance is what? <laughs> Her expression clouds over. I tell her that I came by after lunch too, but they were out. なんで僕も誘ってくれなかったんだ。先輩合唱部の練習だったでしょ。そんなの理由にならない。高杉君 <laughs> stifles a laugh at my objection. 花火師さんも随分拗ねていたわ。今の八代先輩みたいに。I can imagine it. She wouldn't want to miss out on a single precious opportunity to watch a movie with Sokun. I asked them what they watched. 白羽の希望で。she says <clears throat> The title hits hard, reminding me that I'd gone back on my promise to tell her the words of succession Hang em high I force a measured smile to my face that she can interpret however she likes エリカもゲイリー・クーパーが好きじゃない。私の最も好きな映画はマヒルの決闘で、その時のゲイリー・クーパーは老齢だったけどな。若い時はすごい美男子だったんだぜ。うん。でも年を取った時の方が好きだった
I was hoping to see more about Ringo, but uh, I guess not. Daro? Osanai Koroa, Ano Hitotachiwa, are you who need Ponto, Maratekta no Kato, Mote Tayo? We all giggle. Just a casual evening shooting the breeze with friends. But then a moment later, Takasaki can straighten her posture and turns to me. Yatsiro Senpai, Kitinto, Erabeta Mitai desne. Okage Sama de. Her words contributed greatly to my decision. You can't please everyone. She was absolutely right. Yaga unfolds her arms, looking unimpressed. I look between the two of them with a faint smile. She responds brightly and I nod. The cat speaks up. <sighs> I can't argue against her observation. Ringo Sasaki lives in my inner room, but deep within my heart there's another woman. I just can't evict. Oh, <laughs> that image. Mm. Yagiyaki-kun's eyes are peering intently into my room. Yatsuro-senpai <laughs> Having looked inside me and spied my hidden wounds, she cuts herself off and looks down, apologizing for her insensitivity. I take a drink of my cold coffee. Somehow it tastes even more bitter this time, perhaps because of the way my inner self has just been exposed. Whatever the situation, it's up to you. Whether or not you're able to laugh it off all depends on how you feel. My father's words suddenly come to mind. As happens whenever I make any kind of decision, I know there's still a part of me that's wavering. I down the rest of the astringent liquid. The season turns again, and spring is here. Come again? Why are we in spring? Spring always passes by in the blink of an eye. The cherry blossom buds swell until their petals finally unfurl, coaxed into bloom by the warm rays of the sun. I feel uncomfortable, I don't like this, what's happening? The sweet little flowers lift everyone's spirits until one night of rain scatters them to the wind, and they're gone. We skipped the whole season! I d uh, the new term begins, bringing with it new students. It all rushes by in a blur. But I'm still standing still like that cat-shaped cloud I saw one winter's day. Metaphorically stuck in place. Oh god, oh my god. I don't like this. During a nap, I dream. I'm one of those people who can be aware that they're dreaming even while they're in the dream. It's happened to me too, it's it's terrible. I don't like it. In my dream, I am with my father, my mother, my brother and Nerine. We're on a wide plateau with a clear view of the horizon. My father holds a camera and wears an open smile with no trace of cynicism. My mother stands there cheerfully, despite usually detesting having her photo taken. My little brother fawns over my mother, demanding her attention as she poses for photos. Holding hands, Nettie and I laugh together as we watch my happy little family. My heart feels so light, it's like all traces of negativity have been vanquished. I murmur as I look down on myself, laughing with the others. The dream shows everything I desire. 
to smile and laugh together with my family and with Nerine. I smile sardonically at the thought that all I want is the same simple happiness as anyone else. I call out to my smiling self directly below. I tell her, no matter how much you want it, you'll never even get close to your ideal. Her idealistic smile wavers like a pebble dropped into the still surface of a lake. A tiny, almost imperceptible tremor spreading slowly outward. In my dream, gradually but surely, I see my expression change. As I watch my smile slowly fade, I'm filled with an unspeakable sense of fear and desolation. Suddenly the self I look down upon is struck by a piercing cold. Looking sluggishly around for the source, I look up at myself. The dream ends with the realization. My heart is but an empty void. <laughs> Oh, Finally, it's something about Ringo. Like, I was wondering, wh where's Ringo in this ending? When I awake from the dream, I feel that the shade of the light and the scent of the air around me is ever so slightly different. I sense it as I take a deep, quiet breath. The whisper from above my head tells me that she, Ringo Sasaki, had crawled into bed with me. I hadn't even realized it. Finding trails of moisture on my cheek, I wipe them away with the finger. <laughs> she wraps her arms around me, cradling my head. It's like she was watching my dream too. It is comforting, the feel of her soft, lithe torso against my cheek. Her worms, warmth seeping into my body. Her unique girlish scent in my nostrils. She delicately, delicately caresses my face like a musician dancing her fingers across the keys of a piano. Trying to understand me. I'm such an idiot. This is the first time I've really thought about the desire to know the person you love. I'm always being comforted by her. But have I ever sought to truly know Ringo Sasaki? I listen to her soft voice. In my right ear, Takasaki can whispers, You can't please everyone. In my left ear, I hear my father's voice. Whatever the situation, it's up to you. Whether, whether or not you're able to laugh it off, all depends on how you feel. Enveloped in Ringo's scent, I nod my hair. They're right. Then, Yaigakikun's words spill from my lips. I silently thank her. She smiles tearfully at me. And unbidden tears escape my own eyes as I hug her tightly. My flowing tears wash away my ideals, as well as the figure of Nerine Komikado I've kept stowed away deep in my heart. It hurts. This is the price I must pay to have Ringo Sasaki. As I feel the solid warmth of her body in my arms, 
The pain rips open and exposes the deepest parts of me. Birds sing outside the window. As spring moves on, I pray to God that I can always be with Ingo. Oh. So I guess that was that one. Hey Polly Plushy. Oh, I'm sorry. No worries, you can check out the VOD. It's gonna be there. This ending is better than the Nettie one. Uh, I think there is something really good in it in terms of this conclusion that she arrives at that Maybe in order to achieve something or to gain something precious and good in life, we have to let go of other things that are weighing on us. And even though we love them very deeply, they are hurting us. So we have to learn that and moving on and um, accepting a different kind of path for our heart than maybe we had envisioned for a long time because we were infatuated with the other person. So there is something very mature and mm, healthy in that. But I did not like that part of like, as much as the seasons have passed, I am unchanged and stuck. I don't like that. <laughs> and in a way, this is a bit of a paradox because it feels like for her to have gotten to the point where, let's say, she can maturely move on from, let's say, an unrequited love. She needs to evolve, but then she's still stuck, or at least that's how she thinks of herself. So that is the part that's not really sitting so well with me. Uh, but the part with Ingo actually, the in the end there, was, was actually pretty nice and precious. Yusu's got a lot of rewiring to do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We still get the cool uh, main screen, right? That doesn't change, right? <laughs> Please tell me. <laughs> yeah, it's still there. <laughs> Very cute. Alright. Yeah, so we have two more endings left. And I saw you typing in this course saying something about there being an extra thing. Such a classy title, uh, title screen, yeah. Yeah, it's so pretty. That's why I was worried I didn't want to lose it. So we should do Nerine and then uh, the twins and yeah, that makes sense. But I think it's, if you don't mind, uh, I'd rather just save those for next time so we can take our time with them, however much content they each have, and savor it properly. Um, You might remember the extra scene in summer, it pops up when everything is over. Yeah, that's what I was imagining. I was kind of like uh, not really awake <laughs> when I read those things, like I hadn't really... Uh, my mind wasn't fully functioning, so for a moment I was confused. I was like, what extra are they talking about? But the, a while later it's, it hit me. Uh, it's probably like last time when... Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Ringo ending still has my heart. I think those two are so good for each other. Ringo is so good for her. Yes, I agree. But Ringo is, is like, she's so mature and self-aware in and of herself. She is so cool. I, li I, like, I liked her a lot, but after this and after particularly this route where we get to see a bit more into her mind and what she's thinking, how she's perceiving things, I love her even more. She's so cool. I love her. 
<laughs> Rinko End is the best side ending in this game. It's so good. Yes, 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 I like that. Uh, Rinko is heel high on the tier list for me. Yeah, yeah, I love her so much. Uh, real high, sorry. What am I? <laughs> I'm so tired. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. That was awesome. Ringo ending should have been the true ending. Yeah, nah. You know, I would have taken that. But I do want both things, you know? I want Yusuriha to end up with someone she loves and is happy with. Okay. Doesn't have to be the one person she's been thinking about all this time, right? Because life is not always that convenient, right? More, more often than not, we probably have to move on from those things. But I don't want her to stay stuck. I also want to have the personal development of Yuzu, which wasn't in this route because we kept making all of the wrong choices. <laughs> so I would want those two parts to kiss. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> True and Ingo are both uh, uh, tied for me. I like them both a lot. All right, all right. Yeah. Okay. So let's take some of this. This this is gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love seeing it. Uh, ever since uh, we did that and uh, I was uh, booting up the game to start streaming, it was just like, oh, that's the main screen. I forgot about it. It's so cute. <laughs> it's kind of like uh, a momentary brief moment of, uh, what is it? A momentary lapse of memory <laughs> that just brought the an extra droplet of joy every time I booted the game. Very nice. Okay. Alrighty. Yeah, I think this is good for tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Um, as always, I'm happy to share this with you. I'm so sorry if uh, I've been a bit out of it, uh, especially tonight. It's been a roller coaster of a day, and uh, I really had to push hard to pull myself together to even sit down and do this. Uh, because I didn't want to come here and create a bad mood, so I hope I didn't. Um, I also needed the distraction, so it helped me as well. <laughs> um, and now I guess it will be much, much easier to fall asleep because I have a very, very early day tomorrow. So I'm gonna do, do, do just that. Thank you again so, so much. I love you all. Hope the end to your week is nice and not very cold. <laughs> Now that uh, winter is also knocking at our doors, not just in the game, but in reality as well. Uh, take care of yourselves. Uh, bundle up if it's cold wherever you are. It's kind of been really grey around here. And um, yeah, I'll see you again Tuesday with the, the rest of the endings and the extra. And I guess I will prepare just to be ready to jump into the winter chapter if that will be the case. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. So see you then. Until then, take care. I love you. Bye-bye.